Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're talking about condiments. We love a good condiment. That is what makes a meal, what makes a sandwich, a burger, a hot dog. We love condiments. Now of course there are some that are better than others and today we are talking about the eight unhealthiest condiments and why. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload new nutrition, debunking healthy videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly, highly recommend that way you know what you should be eating every day to reach your goals. And I have one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Link discounts to my favorite things that are nice and healthy are also down in that description box. So let's jump into the eight unhealthiest condiments and why. condiments to our meals are a great way to enhance, enhance flavor and overall just make our meals a lot more delicious. However, there are some condiments out there that contain a lot of unhealthy ingredients like artificial additives, lots of sugar, and high amounts of added salt. So we need to know how to navigate condiments. Which ones should we use freely and which ones should we use in a lot more moderation? So today we're going to talk about the eight unhealthiest condiments. These are the ones that we can still use, but we want to just be mindful of our serving size, how much and how often we're using these eight condiments. If you're interested in hearing about healthy condiments, leave a comment down below. If it's a renowning yes, I will film a video on the healthiest condiments and why. But today, let's talk about the ones that we should eat a little bit less often. Number one is ranch dressing. Like I said, who doesn't love condiments? Who doesn't love ranch dressing? I mean, I even put ranch dressing on pizza sometimes, but ranch dressing is extremely, extremely high in calories for a very little amount. I mean, a two tablespoon serving can be anywhere from 100 to 150 calories. And when I have a salad, I know I'm using more than a tablespoon or two. Be mindful when adding ranch to your salads or to your meals in general. Again, it's really calorically dense and generally pretty high in fat. Think about substituting it out for maybe a lighter ranch dressing or you can even top your salad with some salsa. It adds a lot of flavor for very little calories. Number two is fat free salad dressing. Now we talked about ranch and how it's high in calories, high in fat, but honestly, fat free salad dressing may even been, be worse than ranch dressing. Though low in calories, fat free dressings generally contain a lot more sugar. That's because they have to make something fat free taste good for us to want to eat it. And in order to do that, you're going to see a lot of added ingredients, especially added sugar. Because of the added sugar to make fat free dressing taste good, that's why you're better off choosing full fat ranch and just using less of it. Save yourself the added ingredients that are artificial and all of that added sugar. Number three is barbecue sauce. I love barbecue sauce, but what makes it so delicious is all the sugar. Two tablespoons of barbecue sauce can pack about 11 grams of sugar. That's over three teaspoons of sugar in two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. If you think about it, that's a pretty high ratio of sugar. You're better off choosing a lower sugar option. There's some really great ones out on the market. Sweet Baby Ray's makes a no sugar added barbecue sauce and so does G Hughes. You still get all of that smoky barbecue flavor, but a lot less, if any, sugar. Here's one that is pretty obvious and that's going to be pancake syrup. A lot of the pancake syrups on the market, if you're not purchasing 100% pure maple syrup, so the a lot more expensive syrup, if you're buying things like Aunt Jemima or log cabin syrup, they're going to contain a lot of high fructose corn syrup. And we know that this is something that really spikes our blood sugar, can lead to diabetes, and is something ingredient wise that we want to avoid as much as possible. High fructose corn syrup in excess has been linked to has been linked to obesity, heart related diseases, and of course, diabetes. If you want a healthier alternative, just spend a little bit of extra money and get the 100% pure maple syrup. Next up may come as a little bit of surprise, and this is queso. You might think, how bad can queso be? It's basically cheese and salsa, right? Most quesos on the market contain MSG. This is another ingredient that we want to stay away from as much as possible. MSG has actually been associated with weight gain. Of course, more research needs to be done, but that is one of the things that MSG is commonly associated with. As a healthier option, you can choose a different type of cheese or you can go with nutritional yeast, which is basically vegan Parmesan. Now, not all queso has MSG. Just flip over the jar and take a look at it. 
The more expensive brands like Siete are not gonna contain MSG and are equally as delicious. You just have to spend a little bit more for a higher quality product. Next up is margarine. Now we have heard a lot of conflicting information on margarine. Is real butter better or is lighter margarine better? Margarine, honestly, is probably one of the worst foods that you can enjoy on a regular basis. Most margarines contain traces of trans fats. Now, I talk a lot here on my channel about not restricting or eliminating any foods or food groups, but trans fats are something that we don't want in our diet. If we can eliminate them altogether, that is better for our overall health. And because margarine often contains some traces of trans fats, that's what makes it pretty bad for our body. Trans fats has been linked to heart disease. Study after study shows that trans fats is one of the number one causes of heart disease. You're going to find trans fats in a lot of the unhealthy foods or what we call unhealthy foods, fast food, baked goods, especially from your local grocery store, chips, cookies. Those are the types of things we're going to see trans fats in, but we're also going to find that in margarine. So using real butter, 100% pure butter is a better option. Just use less of it. Next up is teriyaki sauce and teriyaki sauce, similar to barbecue sauce, falls on this list because of its high sugar content. Not to mention teriyaki sauce, unlike barbecue sauce, is extremely high in sodium. Two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce is 60% of your recommended daily intake of sodium. Two tablespoons, 60%. High sodium diets are linked to chronic diseases like heart disease and stroke. So we wanna watch our sodium and we also wanna watch our sugar. And because teriyaki sauce is high in both, it falls on this list. And number eight, maybe a little bit of a surprise as well, and this is going to be artificial sweeteners. In fact, a lot of studies out there link artificial sweeteners to obesity. And those of us that are on a low calorie diet, trying to shed a little bit of extra weight, we think that choosing artificial sweeteners is better for our weight loss than actual sugar, but that has been quite contradicted in a lot of health studies out there. Now there are some artificial sweeteners that are better than others. There are some that we should enjoy a lot more often. If you're interested in the best of the best artificial sweeteners video, again, leave a comment down below. If you guys are interested, it's a video that I'll put out, but we wanna be mindful of the artificial sweeteners that we're choosing. We wanna eat them a little less often. And honestly, again, we're better using full regular sugar and just less of it. That's the theme of today's video. Avoid some of these fat-free dressings, margarine, artificial sweeteners, and really just focus on using the real deal and just a little bit less of it for that condiment that's really going to flavor and enhance our food. Like I said, condiments are a great way to add texture and flavor to our foods, but like all foods out there, some are just better than others. Choose your condiments wisely, watch your portion size, and you can still enjoy Enjoy your favorite condiments. If you enjoyed today's video, and of course, if you found it helpful, give it a big, huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, because again, I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Let me know down in the comments, are you interested in healthy condiments? And are you interested in the best artificial sweeteners and why? Let me know, and I'll put those videos out for you. Check out the description box again for nutrition coaching and those links and discounts to my favorite healthy things. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.